catchy tune. <laughs> that video is from the Life of Faith Initiative from the Southeast Iowa Synod that they shared with us recently at the Synod Assembly. And I really thought there, it's a great initiative, but a great series of videos to reclaim and help us under recapture a word that we don't use a lot in the church or in life, and that is that word of vocation. Now we're not talking about vacation, which is what you do away from work, but vocation is what you do that God calls you to do at work. So to help us understand this little used word, I looked up a few definitions. This one from Wikipedia on vocation. And it says a vocation comes from the Latin vocatio, meaning a call or a summons, is an occupation to which a person, any person, could be any one of you, is specially drawn or or for which she or he is suited, trained, or qualified. Though now used often in non-religious contexts, the meanings of the term originated with Christianity. So there you go, something age-old in the church, a gift we have to give to society, an understanding of why we do the work we do. Webster's Dictionary puts it this way, a strong desire to spend your life doing a certain kind of work, the work that a person does or should be doing. And perhaps my favorite uh, explanation from dictionary.com, they say vocation is a divine call to God's service or to the Christian life, a function or station in life to which one is called by God. So here's my question to you. Are you at, are you doing at your job what God has called you to do? There's a great uh, initiative also called uh, the Theology at Work uh, project that uh, is similar to the Life of Faith initiative. It's a non-denominational group that's been studying this idea of vocation and calling. And they say uh, this, of course today is Pentecost, a day when the church ponders the work of the Holy Spirit. And the Theology of Work project says this about the dis this Holy Spirit. The distinctive work of the Holy Spirit is to guide and empower people for the life and work to which God leads them. They go on to say, the Spirit routinely guides believers to a particular work and gives them the skills that they need. He provides guidance for both what kind of work people do and how they do that work. So there are many examples of this in the Bible. For one, the Spirit called Noah into a life of construction work where maybe he didn't initially see himself. God called David and Saul into politics. So yes, politicians can be called by God. He called Moses and, and Aaron to be managers of people. So you who are managers, you are called by God as well. <clears throat> and oh yeah, he used a few fishermen and an accountant to become Jesus' pastors. Probably not what they first had in mind for their lives. And perhaps most intriguing, God called Mary and Joseph to be parents. And you know, uh, I think it's important to point out that it's not always paid work where we feel the most called by the Spirit. In your life, it might be volunteering or it might be parenting. You know, Katie and I don't get paid one cent to be the father of Kirk, Hayden, and Brock. Yet I feel very strongly, friends, in my heart that my highest calling on this earth is first to be a child of God, myself, but then to serve as father and spouse to Katie and our boys. My call to serve my family is even above my work, my call as pastor. Do you see that? Say yes. When we're considering a vocation or a career or a, a calling to a certain station in life, it's helpful to consider a few questions. The Theology of Work Project says there's three main ones you should look at. This is an exhaustive list, but at least gets us started. The first question are, what are the world's needs? Look around you and survey, what are the needs around you? I have to chuckle at our 10 high school seniors that are graduating, and every other time I run into someone going off to college that they're setting some bizarre thing that has no job tied to the end of it, like underwater print journalism or something, you know? <laughs> a degree would be great, and I'm sure you can apply that to wherever in life, but you know, wouldn't it be a smart idea to first survey what are the world's needs? Is there a need for this? Secondly, and I think we all get this, is what are our, your skills and gifts? 
We all know we're uniquely talented and those gifts come to us from God to do specific things that other people can't do. So getting in touch with those, what are your skills and gifts? And then finally, what are your deepest desires? Notice this question isn't what makes you happy. Because not always will you be called to a place where you'll constantly be happy. You may be unhappy at times. You may be challenged. But your job will always bring you great joy. So we balance the first two questions with a third. What are the world's needs? What are my skills and gifts? And then what are your deepest desires? Is your heart in it? Because if it's not, friends, then maybe it's time to rethink what you're doing with your life. I had one of those moments about 10 years ago now. I started off uh, my first career outside of college as a, a broadcaster, a TV news reporter. That's all I've ever wanted to do was be on television and, and report the news and, and bring that to people. And that was kind of my desire. But God had a desire, a path for me that was different. And that was to be your pastor. And, and oftentimes, as I was in that wrong job, I could just feel the conflict within me. Have you ever been there? Say amen. You just know something's not right. But when we can, when we can walk into a, a position or a calling, and for me it was to be a pastor, God wanted that for my life, and I also wanted that for my life. When those came together, it was a thing of beauty. I don't feel like I'm at work any day I come to work because I know I'm doing what God has called me to do. You see, God cares about your desires and wants you to use them for both His and your mutual benefit. Vocation is not about coming here to the church to volunteer or to put in your time with your faith here, unless of course you're called to work in the church, and I hope and pray some of you are. In fact, it's a good time to mention we need a membership engagement coordinator 20 hours per week, if any of you are feeling so led. But I understand that the vast majority of us will not do our work in this building. You are called to work outside of this building, in the world around us, in our daily lives, and rest assured that God is calling you to those places, at your job, away at college, or doing something at home. There's a second video I want to show you from the Life of Faith initiative that I think illustrates this well. It tells a story, the, the sound is a little overmodulated, so you got to kind of fight through that. But there's a great story in there of three different people, a student, a person who works as an insurance adjuster, and I think a stay-at-home dad. And they said they're just too busy to think about vocation or what God wants them to do. But then the light bulb goes off and they realize that what they are doing is what God called them to do. Let's take a look at that video now. Sunday our pastor talked about vocation. She said something like, we're all called to live out our vocation. Something about ministry in our daily lives. How is God calling you to use your gifts? Pretty sure she's encouraging us to find more time to volunteer at church. And I would love to. Our church has so many great things to be involved in. Tons of opportunities to serve on committees and lead in our worship services. We've got great youth activities and choirs. We serve at the local food pantry. We help serve meals at our shelter. But honestly, where do you find the time? When I'm not at this desk, I try to find some time to spend with my friends. Classes, basketball, student government. Making sure the kids are taken care of and I have my own parents who need my attention now. So find time to live out my vocation? I would love to, but with all my responsibility with student leadership at school, how do I have time to do, what does my pastor call it, ministry and daily life? After I catch up on my workload, I'll figure out how to use my gifts. Jerry, that hail damage insurance claim from this morning, can you make sure that check is processed today? I really want to make sure the Johansons can pay their bills. I'll think about it. I'll try to find the time to figure out what God is calling me to do. Hey, wait a second. Come here. Remember, God loves you. And I do too. Have a great day. Huh. Huh. 
You see, when we understand our calling or our vocation, it's not an extracurricular activity, but it's what you're doing, seeing what you do from day to day, whether you're picking up the garbage or picking up people's teeth as a holy calling. So being Pentecost and the, the Spirit blowing among us, I want to do something a little outside of the box. I want you to turn to your neighbor right now and take one minute and share maybe one aspect of your life, your daily life, where you feel that God is, is calling you or is active in your life. And if, if there isn't some aspect of your life, maybe share that too. I, I just can't see it yet. So take one minute, share with your neighbor right now one aspect where God is, is calling you in your daily life. that first Pentecost, at that first day of Pentecost, the Spirit blew through the church and there were all these voices and it was just overpowering. And I kind of sensed that right now, didn't you? As the Spirit of God moved among you and you named and claimed the ways that God is using you in daily life, it's an awesome thing. And we realize there's another side to the coin too. Some of us that have gone through life or still going through life and it can be going on decades now and we feel like you know maybe there's some tension or we're not where God is calling and we're just kind of lifelessly drifting without direction and it's so sad you know there's a, a definition for that too of doing work that you don't want to do that's slavery I mean think about it that's what a slave is a person who's forced to do some work or job that they don't want to do and we're certainly not slaves in, in this great time and place, are we? In this great free country, you can have any uh, career that you're suited for. So we don't want to be slaves, and Paul talks about that. I mean, even though we don't have slavery, maybe in the sense of slavery that they experience around the world, but we may sense, oh, I'm a slave to my paycheck, or I'm just doing this for the money. Well, Paul says, when we receive the Holy Spirit, you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received a spirit of adoption. He goes on to say it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. When somebody dies, what happens? We get together, we have a memorial service or a funeral. Usually their will is read at some point and we figure out who gets their materials and possessions and money. 
Some people leave money to their kids, some leave it to the church, not a bad place to say, I'm just saying. <laughs> or another charity. But you know, you gotta leave it to somebody, right? Or something, you're not taking it with you. You're not King Tut, they're not gonna bury you with all your wealth. You're gonna have to give it to somebody. And you certainly wouldn't give it to your slaves, if you had any, or servants. They would get nothing. But we're not slaves. Paul says we are children of God. Here's what happened. Christ died on the cross. We had a funeral. And Paul says in Romans there was a reading of the will. And this is what we found out, you and I, when they read the will. That you and I are children of God. That all God has and is in charge of now belongs to us. And thank God our job titles don't define who we are, amen? Those of us who took a couple of careers to get it right, or maybe we still like we still, have, still haven't gotten it right, we are so thankful that the title that matters most in our lives as followers of Christ is this one, children of God. Romans goes on to say, because we are children of God, in Christ's death we become heirs of God. We are given the whole world and all the people of the world to entrust in it and to take care of them in all the many different ways that they need taken care of. And we do that with our various holy gifts and various jobs and callings. Day to day, friends, we serve holy callings. My prayer for you this day is that you would find peace in your hearts about this subject for many years to come and be at peace in the place where God is calling you. Amen.